Finally time for a few benchmarks on the new gaming computer. So I'm currently using OBS and you will see desktop in a sec. I'm just keeping it hidden just for now, but you, you will eventually see it. Um, before I do that, I just want to go over that. Yes, I am recording this with OBS. So the scores I get in uh, Cinebench, uh, Heaven, Superposition, and the games I will be running benchmarks in will be lower than they are uh, without OBS actually running and recording everything. Um, the settings I'm using on OBS, it is using AV1 for the encoding, uh, 50 megabit per second, 1440p, uh, 60 frames per second. So with all that settings stuff, it, obviously it's going to affect it quite a bit. But just because I knew it was going to affect that, I also ran every benchmark I'm going to run on this uh, video. Uh, before having OBS open. And uh, no, I did not close antivirus and all this other shit. So it's just going to basically be the performance my system has through general use, not the potential theoretical performance it could have by closing a bunch of stuff. So just my general day-to-day -day and what you can expect to see uh, on streams uh, and in future videos. Uh, comparatively, I don't I don't have games benchmarks or actual streaming at least uh planned. So none of the games I actually plan on recording on this benchmarking are going to um end up in a stream. I mean, let's go ahead and show desktop. And let's begin with the boring ones first. So let's go with Cinebench 2024 and temperatures and stuff are here. This is a graphics card. This is a graphics card hotspot. Uh, this is a CPU. Uh, it is kind of small. It's not really important. You don't need to worry about that right now. There's no throttling going on or anything. Let's get headset this to off. Uh, after each benchmark, I will save the results either in a picture or in text file, depending on how it works out. Uh, after which I will compare at the end with all of these and with the um previous systems whoops the previous systems results here i'll go back here so to begin let's go ahead and run a quick i'm only going to run one time not not multiple run the graphics card benchmark in Cinebench 2024. And while I am doing that, uh, go ahead and explain. System's working great. This graphics card does run hot, but only if looking at hotspot. Other than that, it, it runs normal temperature, like as to be expected for a fan-cooled card. It is the loudest component in the system, though, which is actually kind of a shame. Uh, I cannot wait until I get the uh, heat sink and fan replaced with a um, water block. And this only got a 14,916. You can see here the previous score was 15,025. Uh, let's go ahead and start the multi-core CPU test. Not sure how much of an impact this is going to have on OBS, but we'll see. It's still preparing it. That's why it's not actually started preparing project so the cpu the the fans on the radiators that are deter determining their speeds based on the cpu temperature uh those aren't as loud uh they're relatively loud right now just because the temperature of the system is up to 86 but when they're actually up they're quieter than the three fans on the graphics card even though there are nine fans in the system, uh, excluding the graphics card. So there's 12 fans total if you count the graphics card. Uh, however, I only have the exhaust fan set to account for the graphics card's temperature instead of the CPU temperature, just because there is so much heat getting dumped into the system with the fan-cooled card in there. Uh, when I actually get the water block swapped onto it, I'm going to swap that back to CPU temperature. Maybe... Back to CPU temperature, I'm not sure. I might leave it for uh, graphics card temperature instead of throwing it to CPU. 
Uh, I do have the exhaust fan set so it cannot go to zero RPM. And same as the graphics card, I set a custom curve on that in MSI Afterburner. Uh, that way it, it helps keep the temperatures down and helps prevent the annoyance of the fans going into zero RPM mode. Then starting up for a couple seconds and stopping again as it cools down. Uh, because the default fan curve allows R zero RPM mode. And, and the the sudden movement of the fans was distracting me every time it happened. I was like, oh, it's spinning. Then it stops when I look at it. Oh, it's spinning. It stops. So I, I didn't want to deal with that. So. With the. Um, the current settings. Uh, right now, actually, CPU is running under 90, which is pretty good. It's at 85, 84. I have seen the CPU hit 91 degrees. Uh, that is just the CPU's fault. It just runs kind of hot. The uh, same thing with the graphics card. It can also run hot. Uh, I saw that hit um, 101 on the hotspot. Um, and... The low before that, the other temperature was about 20 degrees less. Generally speaking, graphics card is 20 or yeah, 10 to 20 degrees uh, hotter on the hot spot, which is normal and within spec. Right now, with eight fans ramped up because of the CPU. It's relatively loud, but I mean, they're pretty much maxed out, I think. Uh, yeah, they're maxed out. That's what the 17 in the uh, system tray is in the white text. To the left of the temperatures. Uh, that 17 is just short for a 1700. I, I divided the amounts by 100. The four dot next to it is a different fan. The 13 is the graphics card fan. Uh, that doesn't, or that's so it's running at about 1300 RPM on the graphics card right now. And that test is done for multi core. Big reduction again to be expected because I have OBS open now. So only 1534 instead of 1632. Let's go ahead and run single core. And then I'll go ahead and grab a screenshot of this. I'll have Cinebench R23 to run next, uh, after which I will jump into actual graphics benchmarks, starting with Heaven, just because Unigen Heaven is one I've been running since I got my first gaming computer built uh, when I first got on SSI. And it's it's something that still feels relevant, even though this system finally kicks its ass like quite a bit. It's finally able to stay in triple digits throughout the entire thing. Uh, after Heaven, I'll be running uh, Superposition. Then... I think I'll go for a laugh and get the Batman games done first. Oddly, in the uh, Batman Arkham City, it ends up with a lower average and maximum frame rate than uh, Arkham Knight does. Or at least I think it's a lower average. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's a lower average and a lower maximum. But it's a higher minimum. Oh, those games are relatively old. They run well. Um, none of the games I'll be running will be using any proprietary settings or motion blur or uh, depth of field effects. So I'll, I'll make sure I go over the settings before I start them. And not having those enabled because I always disable motion blur, always disable depth of field. Those are the two. Also chromatic aberration if there's that in any. I think Borderlands 3 has that. I don't remember for sure. Um, if that's on any of them, it's also disabled during testing because those three settings are fucking stupid. I hate all of them. But so far, the only issue I've had with the system, um, it was actually there are two issues and it's not the system's fault at all. It is the fault of Microsoft. Windows. 
uh, possibly AMD, depending on whether or not it also happens on NVIDIA. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't had it happen on my media computer. Um, but my media computer doesn't run any games. It doesn't even have any games on it. So I haven't really been able to test that on there. So the the first problem was just during the initial setup. I got the uh, Windows thumb drive installer and the version on it was 23H2. Went to install, I was like, okay, at the part where I have to open up command prompt and enter this line of shit to bypass this internet requirement. Like I did not have ethernet plugged in. I didn't even have the fucking Wi-Fi antenna plugged in. I didn't have anything. So it, it didn't see the, any connection available anywhere. It was just nothing. It's like, oh, the only option here, ethernet. And send disconnected and that's it. It's like connect to the internet. It wouldn't let me continue. There's nothing anywhere. And the line you enter in the command prompt usually allows you to bypass that. That's how I got my media computer set up with Windows as well. And it worked fine. I did that on stream. Um, the problem is that it wasn't working. So I was stuck. I was like, what the hell? I can't actually install Windows then because there's no goddamn way in hell I am setting this to be online during startup because then it will want me to enter an email address and tie shit online and do all this garbage I don't want to fucking do. Needs to be illegal as some fucking antitrust bullshit. I, I don't know if it actually falls into that category, but it needs to be. It needs to stop completely. We bought the fucking product. If you want to require people who did not actually pay for it and therefore did not enter a fucking product key uh, during the um, installation process, because... All right, fine. I can do that instead of skipping it and activating it later if I really have to. If you want to force people to go online and use an email and stuff, you can do that under the one condition that they did not pay for it. But as long as we pay for it and we enter that fucking code we're given, you should not be allowed to force us to go online to install the operating system. And that pissed me off. So I had to shut down the system, take out the damn thumb drive, go in, grab the uh, 22H2 installer I got for my media computer, and install Windows with that. When I got into it, I had to then delete all the partitions because it created four fucking, well, technically three additional in the primary partitions to install Windows. I don't know why the hell Windows is still doing that. You don't need to install partition or you don't need to create partitions. The point of partitions in the past was because mechanical hard drives were really fucking slow and they had multiple platters in them. So the partition allowed it so one platter could be used at the same time as another platter with their own individual pieces of data in order to increase read and write times. But now that we're using solid state and mechanical drives are essentially almost completely gone in almost every case. And even when they are around, they're fast enough now that it's still not needed and that's, that the partitions aren't even utilizing stuff in that way. Now that it's like that, you don't need to create partitions and it is bullshit that Windows does that. But anyways... I deleted those partitions, I reformatted that drive, and I installed Windows with the 22H2. Worked fine, just like it did with my media computer, of course. <sighs> Updated it, went through all the settings, connected the internet after Windows settings and everything were set up how I wanted. And then, of course, it reset some of the goddamn Windows settings. I had to go through and reset them back to what I wanted again. But, yeah, that was the first issue. Just installation, not... That pissed me off. Because when I first turned on my computer, it was fucking amazing. I saw the lights. I was like, holy shit, it's on. The fans are running. It's working. It's great. 
huge stress reduction. Then I had to sit there for two, three, or four minutes, however long it took for the 64 gigabytes of DDR5, six giga transfer per second RAM, although it was still running at 4.8 giga transfer per second at that time because I hadn't turned on XMP. It is on right now, so it is running at six giga transfer. Um, and to sit there for uh, a few minutes or so, wait for it to train all the memory, and my stress level slowly rose up until it completed. It beeped because I have a BIOS uh, speaker plugged into it. It beeped, entered BIOS, and was like, holy shit. It's stable. It's up and running. I passed post. Memory training completed. And even the goddamn BIOS looks pretty. Although, I guess I gotta increase the number of problems with it because of BIOS. I'll explain that as well. Um, so, it was awesome. It was just a huge amount of stress started reducing as I was playing around in the BIOS, looking at it and looking over it on my system and just seeing how good it looks. It's fucking amazing. Because over this year, the closer it got, the less I wanted to build it. The more expensive it got, the less I wanted to build it. The more I just wanted to say, fuck it, I'm not going to. I'm just going to take my my other system and up it to Windows 11 because I at least know it works and I just, I don't want to deal with, deal with any of it. it it's too expensive. It, it's too stressful. I just, I just don't want to. And when I got to building the system, it's just, it, it ramped up even more. I was just like, I don't want to do this. Especially when I, I, during the stream, like after I had to drill a hole in the top of the case to get cables through, that's when it started going downhill for me. That's when my stress levels were just maxed out, just or close to maxed out. And they were starting to max out. And when everything just started turned to shit, it was all because of that. And I was just like, son of a bitch. This is um, not so great. It's just, it's turning to shit. It's not going to work. It's over $4,000 in this system. And I don't know if it works at all. I still have to wait to find out whether or not it works. And I'm just trying to get through it, trying to keep myself calm. And more time went on. It's just the worse it got. And all of that just vanished as soon as it powered up and got into the BIOS. It was amazing. As for that one issue in the BIOS, it's just the fan curve setting. Uh, that's the only issue I have noticed with it so far. It's a little buggy. Sometimes manually entering a fan curve uh, a number in either temperature trigger or the um, PWM trigger because uh, it's got text boxes you can enter that into. Sometimes those don't take. It'll it'll appear like it does until you click away to a different fan and go back. And it, it'll repeatedly do that. When it sticks, it just it sticks. It won't move at all. I, I don't know why. But that's one of two problems in the BIOS related to the fan curve. And the way to avoid that is to then just move it to where you want with the graph. You can either use the uh, keyboard to do that, which is actually kind of a pain in the ass because you can't always get to the exact dot you want in that graph because uh, it'll skip over it. It doesn't matter what you do. It'll be able, if, if it's like a dot is here and a dot is here and you press left, it'll go and skip over to the stuff on the left side of the graph instead of going down to it. If your dot's here, dot's here still, press down, it'll go down to the text boxes and it'll skip over it. Um, that doesn't always happen, but every once in a while it does, and it's kind of annoying, and it's specific positions of the dots, so you gotta kind of use the mouse to move stuff that way. Uh, so I do that, move it over, works fine, then I can save it. Then that leads into the second problem. Sometimes, for some reason, I don't know why, it's just using the, the BIOS the motherboard came to me with. I didn't flash it because the actually is risky and don't want to and you shouldn't have to flash your BIOS unless absolutely necessary. Um, some reason, 
clicking to save the fan curves to the BIOS will return an error and be like, oh, it wasn't saved. There's Here's this error. I don't remember what it said. It spits out some random ass error and saying that it wasn't saved. Like that it couldn't save it. Click to save again. Same thing, except then it, it's successful. So it, it can fail. You can change absolutely nothing. Click save. Again, save to BIOS and it'll then save. And I don't know why. It makes no sense. There's some weird bug with the BIOS when trying to save fan curves, which is a little strange. So only two issues it has, and it's a firmware issue. So that it's no big deal, really. Just, it's fine. Um, there was also the issue of not being able to enable Secure Boot on Windows, even though Secure Boot was enabled in the BIOS, but I think that was because I started with the 23H2 installer for Windows. So it set that to the uh, secure boot settings. Then I went to the 22H2 and it, I, I don't know, some reason it skipped it or something, I guess. I, I don't have a fucking clue. But uh, uh, I was looking at hardware info or HW info, whatever. Uh, just hardware info. I was looking at that and it's saying, oh, Secure Boot's not enabled. And I was like, what the hell? So I go in, reset Secure Boot keys, go back into Windows, sets new stuff. Hardware Info's like, yep, Secure Boot's enabled. Cool. Good to go. This is a minor little annoyance. Probably, again, just related to that first issue of Windows can't install without internet anymore because the commands don't work. And Microsoft is fucking retarded. And they basically killed off every method of uh, enabling it with 23H2, at least from what I was able to find. Look at, uh, none of the, the options worked, so I, I had to use the 22H2, which is a good thing I have it, which means I'm even more now glad than ever that I bought the uh, media computer I have. Otherwise, I would have had to create my own thumb drive for the damn thing. If I was able, if I was even able to find the 22H2 install, um, but I didn't have to do that. So, anyways, this is just about done. Then I can get a screenshot of it. Uh, those were the only issues I had with the system, though. Everything else has been kind of amazing. Uh, I just, I don't like how loud the graphics card fan gets. I have had to also adjust the fan curves probably a dozen or so times. Because holy fucking shit. Trying to account for the high temperatures while keeping the sound from the system low is not an easy thing to do. So I kept having to modify them in order to narrow it down just right and looks like only got a 117 this time last time was a 119 it's a very small difference not a huge difference overall let me go and screenshot that then let's go ahead oh actually i'll screenshot it in a sec instead let me copy all of these put them in here and rename them so it says with with that way I can just replace these really easily do, 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 with could have done this sooner I just didn't think about doing it as a little shortcut With almost there. Then I'll screenshot Cinebench and update the image using paint.net. Don't actually go to a site called paint.net. I don't know if that's safe. Um, if you want to get paint.net, you got to do a search for it and just say paint.net. And it'll go to a site, something like paint or get paint.net or something. 
It's a free program. Although there is also, I think, a paid version. Don't remember for sure. Uh, I don't remember where to get the paid one. I just use the free one. Because it works well enough for what I use, and it's kind of cool. It is it is good enough that if you want to get paid, then you should get paid. It's better than going to Adobe, so, I mean, yeah. Uh, this is Cinebench 2024, which is right here. So, paste, keep canvas size. And go up, and let's align this to... Right there. Look away and with OBS, save. Oh, and actually, lower this down. I didn't realize that. There we go. Okay, first test done. Next up will be Cinebench 23. This one doesn't save for some reason. I don't know why. And it also is saying Windows 10. Uh, that's a common thing you'll notice. It is Windows 11. You can obviously tell just by the um, start menu down here. Also, I don't have any Nehemic bullshit on this. So, just a good Realtek audio driver. Although it is a gigabyte branded Realtek, but whatever. It, it's actually a good audio driver and instead of using the uh, graphics audio I am going to be using the um, the, uh, inter the yeah the integrated audio from the motherboard this time so I have that set to 192 kilohertz let me go ahead and start this um, because I was only using graphics card audio on my previous system specifically because that system started having audio popping that was annoying as fuck. And I couldn't make it stop, no matter what I did. Like, uninstalling some stuff worked. I couldn't block Nehemic from being reinstalled by Windows, no matter what I did. It was, it was fucking annoying. First test done. Only a 27494, but that's actually not all that bad. Let's run this one more time. Just because it's a fast test. I'm not going to run single core twice. Only multi-core. But with the um, system audio being from the motherboard now, I can actually turn my system up and down without controlling the speaker volume. So I can actually... Do that while in a game. Oh, that time it's 27,533. It's about a thousand points less than I had without OBS open, but that's okay. It's not too bad. Again, I'll go over those results after all the benchmarkings and then that all the benchmarking is done. And no PBO is not uh, enabled. I'm not overclocking or anything. This is just stock results of the CPU. Same as the graphics card. The only thing I adjusted is fan curves. So for the um, the audio, uh, I decided to swap primarily because for some odd reason, the 2080 Super in my previous system was able to play 96 kilohertz uh, from the audio out of my monitor. Uh, it was only set to 48, but I wanted to say screw it and set it up to 96 on this system just because it was available. I knew it was something I could do. But for some reason, my graphics card is only able to output 48 kilohertz to my monitor, which was a little weird. I was like, what the hell? Then I remembered, wait a minute. I can actually use the motherboard's audio. I don't need to use the graphics card audio. So I swapped over to that. <coughs> Set it to 192, took a look at the audio driver, and I was like, this thing's kind of cool. I got a full fucking EQ if I ever want to use it. I'm not going to. I, I don't need to. I got just a bunch of stuff, kind of this sleek looking thing. I don't have to go into the Windows audio setting to fuck with it, although I'm still going to 
be sure to keep an eye on stuff to make sure Windows doesn't fuck with something like it did on Windows 10 on my previous system. Every once in a while, it would change the um, audio quality of my mixing board to something different and set it to a single channel, even though it's got dual channel audio. So stereo instead of mono. Uh, and it was a little bit, um, I don't know why that was happening, but no more audio issues. I, I played Spider-Man remastered for a little over an hour yesterday. And actually that reminds me of the, uh, final issue I've had on this system that I forgot to mention. Um, it's HDR. I don't know if it's AMD's fault or if it's Windows' fault. I I actually blame Windows, not AMD, uh, because uh, I can't test it on my media computer, and I haven't tested it on my media computer. But um, also just the way it's dealt with. It's more Windows at fault than graphics card. So I enabled HDR in Windows, launched the game, enabled HDR in the game and everything. It was it was running fine. And the screen flickered black and came back. I was like, uh, that's worrying. What the hell just happened? Kept going, just see what the hell happened. Every once in a while it'd flicker black. I was like, that's not right. That's bothering me. So I disabled HDR as just the first test because my uh, previous media computer, just from my uh, my stereo, my surround setup, I got connected to my media computer. Every once in a while, if the settings aren't quite right, it can have issues with connectivity. So I was thinking, okay, maybe something's going on and my graphics card is having trouble connecting to my monitor and it's dropping connection temporarily and just the monitor isn't telling me that even though it should. Let's find out what's going on. Just try disabling HDR as the first test. Disabled HDR, the issues stopped. So I was like, okay. I confirmed it's, it's HDR. Now let's figure out why it's HDR. So I did a quick search and was like, oh. This is a common thing everyone's having problems with for years now. That's interesting. And the conclusion from them is that it's uh, a, a Windows component called multiplane layer. Which basically makes it so whenever I have like no board open in a keyboard and mouse game that I'm streaming, that's typically under uh, OBS or it's under something. Or if I have something I'm recording that gets dragged under something else, it... it makes it so OBS can still capture it despite the fact that it's under something. If I disable multiplane layers, then I can't do that. If it's, if it's dragged under something, then if OBS is focused on that specific window, it'll start recording what's over it instead. Um, which is why I couldn't use something like a uh, keyboard and mouse capture back on Windows 7 because it didn't have that. It wasn't able to. And that was actually kind of annoying. And I don't want to disable that. There's people who tell you how to disable it in the registry. And it say, or they say it completely eliminates their problems. So it's like, okay, if it's a layering issue in Windows, let's see if I can figure out another solution. Let's see if I can still have HDR enabled. But first, I want to test... Ignoring HDR in Windows and instead just enabling it in the game to see what happens. So I did that and the flickering sort of changed the behavior. It was a green flicker, just partial screen, just for a frame. Partial screen, flicker green again. Partial screen, flicker green again. Then one frame after another, like just back to back. It was yellow, red, then it went black. Like the flickering before. I was like, okay. Let's try something different. So HDR at all in Windows is going to cause it, not just the Windows enabled HDR. So I decided if it really is this layering issue, then this game does have exclusive full screen. If it's exclusive, then 
possibly that layering will be temporarily disabled as long as this game is up and running in exclusive full screen mode. And it looks like a 1953 there. So let me keep talking as I get a screenshot of that. And up here. So I enabled exclusive full screen in Spider-Man Remastered. With HDR enabled. And the issues stopped. So from now on, if I want HDR on this system, the easy way I can do to prevent all of the um, screen flickering issues is to simply not use HDR without exclusive full screen mode. So if it's a uh, window, borderless window, or a standard full screen mode, full screen or uh, HDR is off limits because of a um, annoying bug that has been around in Windows 11, possibly also in 10. I never had the issue in Windows 10 though, but an annoying bug in Windows 11 that has been around for years that has never been fixed. So kind of dumb. Anyways, let's go ahead and now begin a heaven benchmark. Uh, there is actually one other bug. I have had similar bug on Windows 10, though. Um, there were, like, black boxes around the outline of uh, OBS backup files, Google Earth folder, or, or, yeah, this folder, Google Earth folder, and System Tools folder. Uh, all I had to do was delete the the image, the icon cache, and it fixed it. That That's something that happened in um, Windows 10 before. It's not a big deal easy to fix. You only got to do it once and it should never happen again. Don't know exactly what the cause was that that made it start, but whatever. So heaven going to be running 1440p, of course, full screen into aliasing 8x, extreme tessellation, ultra quality, DirectX 11. Run. And this might be loud. If it's loud, I will have to disable sound. Yeah, it's a little loud. So let's go ahead and disable sound. And begin benchmark. Although I could just turn desktop audio sound down. I'll uh, turn this down. Bring this back up. I'll, I'll close out just because I did that. I'll close out of this and start it back up again. That way there can be some sound going on in the background. That looks like it should be fine. Let's go ahead and close this. Oops. And I'll relaunch it just because I alt basically minimized it. So uh, almost alt tabbed out. I just clicked away. It didn't actually alt tab out. I was going to say alt tab out, but I meant it minimized it. So just to make sure it's actually there. Benchmark. Now you can see the overlay. Ignore the uh, the overlay I have where it says average frame rate. Just for this, I could technically reset it and do stuff. But that, that includes the uh, launch time, the loading stuff. So it's going to be different than the actual benchmarks average. Uh, the one on the left is fine. And now that you can see the new layout, um, I have stuff in red because AMD, then the one beneath it is more of a salmon color is the CPU because uh, that's also AMD. So GPU, then hot. Uh, so you can see 68 degrees GPU temperature, then hot spot of 82 right now. GPU, then power. Thought the power would be interesting just because graphics cards use way too much goddamn electricity now. Same as the CPUs. It's insane. Uh, I don't have CPU power on the graph just because I didn't really have enough space for it. I was trying to keep it as compact as possible, not show a lot of unnecessary information. But the CPU isn't too much higher than my previous one. I have the graph ability in MSI Afterburner set to only go up to 210 because I was under that. The, the peak I saw the CPU draw was 208. Uh, though I think that was 208 point something. So basically about 209. So it should be under 210. And the peak I've seen the graphics card go up to was 499, so about 500 watts on the graphics card, and about 
209, 210 watts on the CPU. And I have a 1000 watt uh, power supply in the system. Right now, CPU is running 58 degrees Celsius. Fans on that only running in the 800s. I have those turned way down because, I mean, I'm using a hell of a lot of radiator space. And it does not matter how high I turn them up. It's not going to matter with just the CPU. It might even be fine with what I got right now when I get the graphics card swapped to water block and add it to the loop. Uh, because just the amount of radiator space. The fans can go up to 1700 RPM right now. They're quiet. But the graphics card is pretty damn loud. Uh, the graphics card, I don't have its fans in the um, overlay. But right now, it is running at 2500 RPM. So, graphics card fans almost maxed out. Uh, the curve I have set, I think it goes up to 100% at 80 degrees. I don't remember for sure. I may be 75. I adjusted it a few times. Uh, just to account for that hot spot as well. Uh, because the fan curve will base it on the regular, not the hot spot. So just to account for hot spot, I, I reduced stuff. Uh, about 20 degrees. Or, or something like that. 10 or 20, I don't remember for sure. I'm pretty sure it'll max out at 75 or 80. And the max it apparently reported today was 2620. And right now it is up to 2610. Graphics card is really loud right now. Kind of annoying. The rest of the system is nice and quiet. I also have the pump adjusted to a uh, curve as well, so it will speed up as the uh, CPU gets hotter. Uh, I don't have it set to go to 100% until CPU reaches 80 or 90. I don't remember what I have that set to. Um, I think it stays maximum of like 50 or 60 otherwise. And this time I only got a score of 46.82 and only a 185.9 max frame rate there. Again, lower than it was before, but that's fine. Let's see about setting this to desktop. And there we go. Save there. And just in case, screenshot that and close. Oh, whoops. Next test will be superposition, but let me go ahead and remove screen capture so I can screenshot this. Close that and show screen capture again. And open OBS or not OBS, open the folder. Throw this in here. Open Heaven Benchmark. Keep canvas size. Over. And up. And with OBS, save. Okay. Then copy that text. Delete that file. And paste it here. Minimize this and get superposition done. Superposition, the superposition is ugly, and for some reason it doesn't actually keep these settings saved. I don't know why. Maybe it's this, but I doubt it. Yeah, I kind of doubt that because there's nothing in there to save it, unless you have to click to lock it. I don't know. So I just set this each time. Don't go 4K or 8K optimized. That doesn't actually bring it to 4K or 8K. Where the hell is... Oh, dot custom. Um, those actually run better than running at 1440p, uh, which is weird. So, 
yeah, I think it's just using some scaling stuff. DirectX, yes. Enable full screen. Set this to UHD 1440p. Max out the shader. Again, don't go 4K or 8K optimized. Just go to extreme and high. Turn off depth of field and motion blur because those are crap. Even though this is synthetic benchmark, but I don't like those. So what the fuck is the point? And run. See how well this one does. Actually, kind of like the way Unigen Heaven looks. I uh, like the style it's got, but superposition, kind of hate it. It's kind of ugly. There's also uh, Unigen Valley, but I didn't care to get that. It always just, the last time I ran it, it ran a lot better than Heaven did. I don't think it actually has tessellation. I think it's an older uh, benchmark they made. I'm not entirely sure. But, I mean, this one is the newest and Heaven is still kind of relevant. Because Heaven, uh, at least within the last few generations, it still ran under triple digits. Average. So... Pretty sure after this generation, Heaven's finally going to be uh, no longer necessary. Even though the first time I ran it, I had, um, I think, one or two Radeon HD 5870s in my system. I don't remember for sure. And back then, man, I could barely run the damn thing. It was crazy. Like low double digit, sometimes single digit frame rates. Managed to crash it when showing the wireframe of everything. Because it was just way too much for the system to handle. It also only uh, allows for 2 gig graphics RAM in heaven. Uh, I'm not sure how much this one allows for. Uh, so like it utilizes, I mean. But, I mean, this one you can see my graphics RAM is up to just under 14 gig. It's got 24 gig, though, so it's fine. Uh, the amount used on my previous system was less, so it was not able to actually use as much as it wanted, apparently. Uh, because my last system, the 2080 Super, and it only had 8 gig. But... Pretty sure it was using all 8 gig of that. It was the same settings I'm running now. <sighs> and, uh, yeah. I also did change the text, the font, I mean, of the overlay. Just because the one I was using it just would have been more of a pain in the ass to try and align. And it never really fully aligned quite right. This one that I'm using, you can barely tell unless you actually do a direct comparison. You can barely tell it's been changed. I kind of like the way this one looks. I just like the way the other one looks a little bit better other than the um, alignment. The alignment of all the, the text in the one I'm using now is better. Whoops. Accidentally bumped the uh, DPI of my mouse. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and screenshot save this with OBS. Select folder. It's saved. Let's go into here. Superposition. Move this over. It's right here. Let's go ahead and copy that. Delete. Paste. Because that's the new one. So you can see 1117. 1117. I also have the seconds there. Because I kind of need them. So, finally, we can jump into the first game benchmark. It's going to be Batman Arkham City, which means I need to turn my controller. Which I can finally use without a fucking cable. Bit of a hardware handshake issue on my uh, previous system. So, I had to use a cable and the Steam Driver. I am using the Steam Driver with this. I didn't even bother trying to use it without. But, it works. I haven't had any problems with it so far. I've tested... Uh, this game here was the most problematic. It was the most consistently always a problem on my previous system game. 
uh, which was only resolved with the cable and Steam driver on my previous system when using controller. And even it ran fine. But, like, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and launch this. This one's going to be a laugh, though, just because of how high the frame rate will be. I'll go over the settings used in it as well, just to show. Again, no proprietary shit. No motion blur, no field of view, no chromatic aberration. Funny how NVIDIA's logo can't even play right. It's supposed to sound better than that and play faster. It, it's like it's running half speed, which is hilarious. And go in here. I forgot this game's audio is actually turned down. Let's go ahead and turn this up a little bit, though. Just because I turned OBS down. That way you have something to listen to. And... It's not going to show. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because you can't actually change the graphics settings for this. Whatever. You can't change graphic settings for this in the game, only with the launcher, which it doesn't go to after you set it up the first time, unless you set Steam to always use the launcher. Anyways, let's go ahead and start the benchmark. This one's going to be a little bit different. For this, i got to uh, just take a screenshot. It's going to be easy. Then I'll just copy, paste, resave. I do know that... Um, the maximum on this is lower than the maximum on Arkham Knight. Which is kind of funny. Because on Arkham Knight, um, it hit 511 with OBS not open. And this one, I think it hit over 260, just almost 270 with, the, uh, with OBS closed. So... Same situation on each one. Again, each one also max graphics without proprietary, which is why that doesn't have any physics going. I did not install physics on this system, even though you can technically run it through your CPU if you want to fuck up your frame rate. Not a whole lot of games that really use it, though, so it's really not worth doing and whatever. Uh, we'll see how this runs. It's almost done. This is the last area. It just has to circle around and do some stuff first. This, I think, is the last area. Uh, I haven't actually seen Batman. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So, screenshot. Then, let's go ahead and exit. Looks like the minimum, 166, max, 245, average, 206. So, I'll exit this. Go back. Exit the game. And again, just because I'm going to be comparing these after, open this, Arkham City, and you're going to end up seeing a little bit of a glimpse, Arkham City, copy the new one over the old, and save. And close that. And I can delete that Arkham City image because it is now the other one. Next up is Arkham Knight. It might have the same, no in-game settings. A bit, a ability to change them, I mean. If Steam hurries the fuck up. I think it's pissed because I just got stuff done. Because I had a Windows update um, when I got up today. So I had to um, adjust stuff. Or rerun the benchmarks, I mean. So second time running them today. Go into the game, then I gotta turn this up because it's quiet as fuck, because again, I turned stuff down. Oh, it is turned up. I guess this menu just has no audio. Good to know. It does one move and stuff, but apparently it's got no music. Whatever. Oh, it does have some graphics options. So, okay, cool. So you can see what I'm using. V-Sync is off, max frame rate. It limits to 90, which is a bit stupid. The benchmark, on the other hand, disables that. 
which is a little odd. I don't know why they only set a max frame rate of 90 in the settings if the uh, benchmark removes it. But oh well. Max texture resolution, shadow quality, level detail, motion blur is off, anti-aliasing is on, chromatic aberration is off, film grain, grain is off because who the fuck uses film grain? That's dumb. Anisotropic filtering is maxed out. All the game works crap is disabled. So go back and benchmark. Okay, maximum is over 300 now already. My overlay, for some reason, is gone. There. Let me uh, actually go back. I'm going to rerun this test just because my overlay was gone and I didn't realize. So, there we go. So, I kind of interrupted it by clicking. Sometimes, in order to get the MSI Afterburner overlay to pop up, you have to click the game once it's open. So, just because that affected it, I had to bring it back up and restart the test. So, so far, maximum, uh, right before this part is where that 511 maximum was without OBS open. So, it looks like it's already almost 100 less on the maximum just from having OBS open. But at the same time, I mean, still over 400 frames per second. Again, the Batman games are just supposed to be kind of a laugh. It, not supposed to be this whole look at how fucking um well the system runs and all that shit and this is the scene i was actually remembering i was thinking it was going to be on arkham city but no it's arkham knight apparently so whatever average is over 300 so far Not really any audio during the benchmark on this one. I don't know why they did that. I thought I just had the audio turned down, but yeah, it looks like just nothing. Kind of fucked up. Oh well. It would have been nice if there was something going on, like a sound of him crashing through the corner of the wall and everything else going on. Would have made it a little more interesting. Desktop audio is reporting some sound, but it's not the game because the game's sound is maxed out. I have OBS turned down, but that's it. And this one, I got to be quick. Because as soon as I do that, it exits out. So there we go. Go and exit the game. Do the same thing I did with the last one. Open Arkham Knight image. Go into OBS folder. And Arkham Knight, open this, copy, paste, and save. Close that, go in here, delete that, minimize. Next up, let's go ahead and run Borderlands 3. Because only three games remain to run, and that's Borderlands 3, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Grand Theft Auto V likes to be a bit of a bitch and doesn't like to close after it actually closes, though, which is a little odd. I don't know why. So I have to actually open Task Manager and kill the process. Which is strange. I don't know if that's just because the retarded method they use to benchmark that. And I think Borderlands 3, the black screen here, is because I have it set to skip all the startup logo stuff. Pretty sure I did that. Uh, so it's still loading, even though it's a black screen. You can see my cursor there. There it goes. So no startup logo stuff. And it tends to load the game during the startup logo stuff. Uh, this one can't be skipped. So. Signing in. Options. Visuals. Go down through basic first. You can see DirectX 12, borderless window. Vertical sync is off. I'll have to change this to exclusive full screen when I play it. Resolution scale 100%. Limit frame rate is unlimited. Build of view is 90. 
feel cold field of view is 90. Next page, advanced. Graphics quality, ultra. And aliasing, temporal. Texture, ultra. Material, ultra. Anisotropic filtering, 16. Shadows, ultra. Display stats are off. Draw distance, ultra. Clutter, ultra. Terrain, ultra. Foliage, ultra. Volumetric fog, ultra. Screen space reflections, ultra. My previous system. I run the benchmark with this on ultra, but when I actually played it, I had to turn it down because it makes a huge impact on the frame rate. Uh, character detail, ultra. Ambient occlusion, ultra. Ambient occlusion on my previous system also sucked. It's just an NVIDIA thing. It's trash. It'll uh, have these weird-ass lines everywhere there's ambient occlusion applied. And it's just lines you can see just running all the way through it. No fucking reason for it. it they just half-ass it. AMD's overall picture quality, some reason, just looks far superior. And it's not even just for ambient occlusion. Like, the... The clarity, like the contrast of the image on AMD looks so much better than NVIDIA. Like I've known that since I had my Fury X and swapped over to my 28 Hunt or my or my 2080 Super. I noticed it and I was like, what the hell? But then noticing again, I just forgot how much of a difference there is. And it's it's amazing. Camera motion blur is off. Object motion blur is off. And fidelity FX sharpening is on. I don't remember what this does, but whatever, it's on. Because it's not exactly proprietary. At least I don't think it is. And you can see previous results here. But let's go ahead and start. Benchmark. This one's just going to be a simple text file that it creates. Same as uh, Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption 2. Those are each both just text file creations. And I think I forgot to turn the audio up on this, but whatever. Not a whole lot of audio in this benchmark. Uh, there's some explosions and stuff later, a bit of gunfire. But it's overall relatively kind of quiet. Uh, even if you have audio turned up. So it should be fine. So far, graphics card's doing really well. It's just a noisy motherfucker. CPU is doing fine. Nice and relatively low. Means the fans of it are also pretty low. Nice and quiet. Fans start to get loud after, I think it was 1300 RPM when they start getting noisier. I'm um, not sure. All of the nine Noctua fans I have in this system, when they're maxed out, they're only about as loud as my previous system was when it was maxed out. Even though my previous system I had the rear exhaust on each side, so that's two... I had one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I had uh, two radiators, or two 240 radiators and one 120 radiator there. So that's five fans plus the uh, two rear exhaust fans on that system means seven fans in total in that one. And uh, so two more fans in this system and maxed out. They're only about as loud as the seven were in that one. And that text file should have been created. So let's go ahead and exit game. And it should be benchmark data. Yeah, Borderlands 3. The newest one, just a regular text. It also creates uh, a different type of uh, file here. A CSV. Which is what I think it actually reads in the game. Uh, it's a spreadsheet apparently. Possibly open it with open office. I have not tried opening it. Uh, let's go and take that and drop it into here. So just the regular TXT. Gives all the information I really need. And Borderlands 3. Again, copy the name of it. Delete. And paste the name. 
And I can close the Borderlands 3 folder. Next up is Grand Theft Auto 5. This one's going to take a minute to load. The amazing thing, like, holy shit. Grand Theft Auto 5 is the one that has the largest improvement. Although, other than Spider-Man Remastered with ray tracing enabled. Because that game, at least. Um, my previous system, I couldn't have ray tracing enabled on it. It was uh, way too much for it. And I had to use, or, or I had to use some scaling thing in order to have ray tracing enabled. But whatever, the settings I had in Spider-Man Remastered on my last system, like that game ran like shit on that system. Like there were times when it could actually dip down into 30. And it would never hit triple digits. It was, uh, it's pretty crazy. It destroyed that system. Goddamn insane. So you can see settings there. Go down graphics. Actually enter this so I can go through it all. DirectX 11, you can see with the overlay saying 11 up there, even though it's kind of hidden. Under the overlay, I don't feel like removing it. Ignore suggested limits is off. It's not necessary. Screen type, windowed, borderless, so borderless window. 1440p, auto aspect ratio. FXAA, MSAA, X8. V-Sync is off. Maxed out population density, variety, distance scaling, highest texture quality, shader quality, shadow quality, reflection quality, reflection, MSAA, water quality, particles quality, grass quality, shadows, post FX, motion blurs all the way down, uh, in-game depth of field effects all the way down, anisotropic filtering maxed out, ambient occlusion maxed out, tessellation maxed out. Oops. Ah, oh, whoops. I didn't change anything at all while I was asking that. Then the advanced graphics, you can see there. Extended jet. I thought I had that turned up. That should have been turned up. It must not have saved it or something. I don't know. Whatever. I'm not rerunning the damn thing. Um, I guess I'll max this out because I did max it out on the other one. It won't make a huge difference though, but whatever. Pretty sure I had that maxed out for some reason and turned it back down. Weird. Whatever. Let's run benchmark. And that's not gonna make a huge difference. Um I'll run that I'll run this benchmark twice just because of the extended shadow distance issue. So I'll run it the first time real quick. It's just like, oh yeah, the game has to restart after. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. I don't care. I'll run it twice just in case it does affect the the frame rate. <clears throat> Having it up versus down. Uh, just in case I did accidentally forget to turn it up on the uh, benchmark without OBS. Right now I can already tell the frame rate's lower than it was without OBS though. That area had at least 130 at some point with OBS closed. This game runs like shit though. Same as Red Dead Redemption 2. It's actually kind of pathetic. This is an old ass game. This game originally released at the end of the life cycle of Xbox 360. It is that fucking old. Like it was one of the last games on that console. I think it released during the final year of that console. It was ported over to Xbox One. I think it's since also been ported over to Series X and S. It's on Steam too, but like... God damn, man. It's old. And it runs like trash. It should run a lot better than it does. And it is crazy that it doesn't. Red Dead Redemption 2 is newer. Looks fucking phenomenal. Like, actually incredibly fucking amazing. But even Red Dead Redemption 2 runs like garbage. Uh, graphically... If you compare them, it, it seems like they're probably running on the same engine because if you increase the graphics, or if you were able to increase the graphics of Grand Theft Auto 5 to equal Red Dead Redemption 2, 
the frame rate would probably drop down to be the same as Red Dead Redemption 2's in equal measure to how much the the graphics are improved. This benchmark also apparently... I guess I have the game turned way down, so there's not really any audio being heard. Oh, well, that's no big deal. Uh, I'll try to remember to turn it up on the next run through. Because the audio level doesn't really affect anything. Although this one, actually, no, I'm going to leave it down just because this one, this game in particular, tends to have some um, music that's... Um, not so good to uh, put on YouTube because copyright stuff. Even if I'm talking all the time, people will bitch about it. and That can still happen all the time, even though I have a lot of fucking commentary on this. Amazing. I don't know how it's using so much graphics RAM, though. Because that's what's in use. That's not the total. I don't know why it's using 22 and a half. It's insane. But it's using 22 and a half. For some fucking reason, it decided it wanted to use 22 and a half. Like, what the fuck, man? It's crazy. Especially since the graphics setting. Some reason on my uh, previous system, I wasn't able to max out Red Dead Redemption 2 because it was claiming it would have brought it over 8 gig. But on this system, it was like, oh yeah, it's it's just about 7 gig total used if you max it out. Like, what the hell? Why is there dis the discrepancy there? I don't understand. That that doesn't make sense. It's weird. Oh, well. And let's go and run that one more time. This time, I'll run it with... Uh, no. Oh, okay. That's that's interesting. It already reduced it after. Right, so did it not? You know what? Fuck it. Uh, no. No. Buggy ass game. Let me. What the hell. Extended shadows distance is just broken. Uh, apparently. Apply, apply, or advanced graphics settings is. I, I don't know. That was that doesn't make any goddamn sense. I'm pretty sure I uh, hit apply on that last time, though. So, whatever. Unless it was broken. I, I guess I'm just not going to run it one more time. Fuck it. Why not? Just exit because it won't make a huge difference, and I don't know. It, I doubt it really will. Big thing is just going to be OBS. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and go into Rockstar Games. GTA 5 benchmarks. With OBS. Drag and drop. And go back. Oops. Rockstar Games. Trying to find these is kind of a bitch. I had to look it up online to figure out where it saves them. Then... Where is right here? Copy, delete, and paste. And some reason, if I remember right, it doesn't actually say the settings used either, right? No, yes, it does. Okay. Let's see if it actually did the um, shadow distance, long shadow. Shadow distance of two. Let me check the other one here. Shadow distance of two. Okay, so it's the same settings. For some reason this wasn't saving extended shadow distance. I I don't know why. Uh, I can do shadow search shadow quality. But, 
you know, all the shadows are the same, so I can close those. Go back into here so I don't fuck that up. And open task manager with control shift escape. Scroll down until I find somewhere, unless it actually closed it this time for some reason. It's games launcher, which is fine. It needs to stay open because I'm going to be launching Red Dead, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2. Usually Grand Theft Auto 5 gets, st oh yeah, it's stuck right up open right here. I don't know why. Grand Theft Auto is kind of programmed like shit. I have to end the task. Otherwise, I can't launch another game. Now I can launch Red Dead Redemption 2. And I figured that out the first time because I uh, tried launching Red Dead Redemption 2 for the first benchmark after Grand Theft Auto 5. And it's like, oh, it can't launch. Reinstall the game. It's like, what the fuck? So I verified the Red Dead Redemption 2 game cache with Steam. Like, oh yeah, nothing's wrong with it. Like, what the fuck? So I checked Task Manager because I, when I opened Steam to verify, it also said I was in game. I was like, oh, uh, what? Didn't found Grand Theft Auto in the background. Like, oh, that's not supposed to be open. I closed it. What the fuck? So I closed it after and it's like, oh, okay, now I can run it just fine. The settings. Go ahead. Display. See all these things, not going to really make a difference in the graphics setups, but just so you can see. Back into, I don't think camera is going to matter, but just so you can see, camera follow level, I think that says hi. That says hi. Turn the overlay back on in a sec. Go back. Graphics. Again, I'll turn the overlay back on after I'm done checking through all this. Output adapter isn't going to matter, nor is monitor. 1440p, refresh 170, because it's the 170 refresh rate monitor. Full screen, V-Sync is off, triple buffering is on. Quality levels, custom, ultra, so everything's maxed out. So, um, texture, ultra, anisotropic filtering, lighting, global illumination, shadow, far shadow, screen space, ambient occlusion, reflection, mirror, water, volumetric, particle, tessellation, AMD FSR 2 is turned off. Temporal anti-aliasing, anti whatever, FXAA and MSAA all turned on. Uh, I'm pretty sure this only, yeah, this only goes to four. Advanced graphics, unlocked, Vulcan, near volumetric, far volumetric, volumetric light. See everything here. Then there is one. Uh, there's TAA sharpening, that's just turned off. Motion blurs turned off. Resolution scale turned off. Uh, reflection MSAA. Some reason I remember that being able to go to, to eight on my previous system. Now it only goes to four, which again kind of weird. Maybe they do something different with Nvidia than they do with AMD, because again this is only using seven, no, seven gig total graphics RAM. Although it says others, 815 meg, then the rest is Red Dead Redemption 2. But either way, for some reason I wasn't able to actually max out Reflection MSAA on my previous system. Which is odd. But everything else is maxed out just like it was on the previous system. So, overlay back on, run benchmark. It's the final benchmark to run, then we can go over the results and compare to my previous system and compare to what stuff is like without OBS open. Just to see the impact OBS has. And again, you can see graphics RAM is increasing in over 22 gig in use. Kind of insane.
So it said, oh, it's only gonna end up using like seven. No, it's it's twenty two and a half. Like um I don't know why they're so inaccurate with that. And I forgot to turn the audio on this one up. God damn it. Oh, well, there is audio on the loading, but it's no big deal. You should be able to hear a little bit of the audio when it gets into the benchmark. Uh, not too much, but a little bit. And this area right here, right at the start, my previous system, when I ran this benchmark, the exact same settings I'm using now, this was at 20 frames per second. Which means this scene right here is three times the frame rate of my previous system. Which is fucking incredible. Just actually seeing that. Like, goddamn. And this will actually, with OBS closed at least, some areas it was able to hit triple digits, low triple digits, but still triple digits. Something I could not do on my previous system. My previous system struggled and I had to reduce a lot of the settings in order to get to um, have some pretty relatively decent playable frame rates. And even then it would still sometimes drop down to 30s and 40s and is uh, crazy. Just, and that's also, again, with Vulkan and everything also enabled, but the... Increase is amazing, and apparently I'm now using all the graphics RAM. 25, I guess I'd have to calculate that out. I don't remember exactly how much 24 is. Let me see. 24 times 1024 is... That doesn't make sense. I don't know how it's using 26 gig then. I don't have 26 gig graphics RAM. I only have 24. That reading seems a little off. Which is odd. I'll have to play around with it a little bit later. So just ignore the graphics RAM reading. Because it doesn't make any goddamn sense. I don't have 28 gig. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's odd. I'll adjust it and figure out what the hell is going on after. I didn't notice that when I was running this before. I was a little too busy doing other stuff around my apartment or looking at what was going on during it and not actually looking up the RAM. Uh, or I was staring up at the frame rate or down at the frame rate, whichever one. Uh, either way, it's doing pretty damn well. It's actually a pretty good benchmark here run. Even though the game still kind of runs like ass, but whatever. It looks amazing, though. Like, actually amazing. There's some actual gameplay elements that suck about it, and I kind of hate. Especially the Pinkerton ambush bullshit. That I I would like to have removed. It's, it's fucking stupid. It pissed me off so many goddamn times I played through the game the first time. Figuring out how to uh, create a manual save the first time was also kind of a pain in the ass because it wasn't exactly straightforward. It was just all like, oh yeah, here's this um, going to story instead of uh, just directly saying save from the main menu. I couldn't find it for a bit. And it pissed me off so much, mostly because the um, Pinkerton bullshit was happening. Those horses don't always die the first time, or at all, I mean. Uh, one of the benchmarks I ran on this before the Windows update, the the horse on the left didn't die, for some odd reason, and ended up uh, running forward when he got on this and kind of went right in front and stopped right off to the side and almost got hit as he rode by. But the benchmark is just about done, then we can go over the results. I don't know why it's saying that with the graphics RAM, though. It's a bit weird. Maybe it's cumulative counting up or something. I, I don't know. Screenshot that and exit. I don't need to actually screenshot that because it creates a text file though. Then 
Go ahead, go into Rockstar Games. Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't actually have these games installed. This is also another little shitty thing Rockstar fucks up with as they add, oh, Max Payne 3, Alloy Noir, VR, Alloy Noir. They add folders for shit you don't have, which is why? Why do that? It's so unnecessary. There's nothing in there. So what the fuck's the point, you dumbasses? Can't you detect something? Jeez. Their programming is uh, dated. Anyways, benchmarks. With OBS, drag and drop. Then I can close that and Red Dead Redemption 2. Copy, delete, and paste. Then go, aw, oh, fine. Up, open in new window. And let's begin with Cinebench. So this is, and actually, up one more. Open a new tab, or not new tab. Met new window. Go to my previous system, Cinebench. 23, right? Yeah, start with Cinebench R23. Not what I wanted you to open with. Why are you opening with that as default? Let me go into default. Bit retarded. Paint.net. Paint.net. Set default. Did I just set default for all of these? With a one press? That's so stupid. <sighs> I guess whatever. Quickly do this. Otherwise it's going to annoy me when I open other shit. I don't know what JPE is. I'll leave that for now. Because anything I don't need to open with that, I can right click. And this is my, okay, next one. Without OBS, then, or no, that's with OBS, then without OBS. So reorganize this a bit. So this is with OBS, this is without OBS. Without, oh, I opened without twice with OBS. That's why. There we go. Okay. So my previous system, Instant Bench, it only got a 12,572. The 7600, the Ryzen 5 7600, I mean, in my media computer gets over 14,000 on Cinebench. I think I have the benchmark for that. I don't know where it is. I'm not going to bother looking for it then. It might be in documents. I guess I should look for it. Is not here. So whatever. I don't care. It might also be on this system. I don't care to grab it. Either way, whatever. You can see this was my previous system. 12,572 for multi-core and only a 12,82 for single core compared to when I was not with, or when I didn't have OBS open system I'm currently using, 28,793 for multi-core and 1,984 for single core. Then with OBS open, you can then see the comparison was 27,533 with multi-core and 1953 single core. So compare, pretty big difference. A little over a thousand lost just from, from having OBS open. But even with OBS open, it's still more than double my previous system, which is fucking amazing. 
So Cinebench R23 is done. Let's go ahead and check Cinebench 24. So without OBS next, where is Cinebench? And Cinebench right there. I don't know why that got shrunken. That's a bit weird. Must have accidentally squished it when I saved it. Oh well. Either way. So my previous system on Cinebench 2024, the graphics was the uh, 2080 Super. CPU again, 9900K. Graphics score was only uh, 6859 compared to a 15,025 of my 7,900 XTX in my current system. So again, current system more than double the score. And compare that to, with OBS open, 14,916. So again, a bit of a loss with OBS open, but not a huge difference. Then CPU multi-core on my previous system, only 747 versus 1632 on this new one with OBS closed and with OBS open it was 1534 so again over double my previous system and about 1000 points lost with OBS open though much less so despite recording with AVN or AV1 encoding right now running through graphics card uh, much less of a reduction than you'd expect on the graphics portion there. In single core, only 78 on my previous system, 119 on this one, and 117 with OBS open on this one. Pretty crazy. Go out and let's go into the Batman games. This one will be easier to look at. So let's see, no NVIDIA, Max 1440, was this one? No PhysX, oh right, I ran one with PhysX, just in case, but yeah, whatever, let's go ahead and grab this. It's Arkham City, oh that was Arkham, oh yeah, duh, because it's Arkham Knight. So let's open Arkham City on this, that's with OBS, let's do the one without OBS first. Arkham City, then Arkham City. All right, so my previous system, Arkham City, pretty close to engine cap. Uh, I'm not sure what engine cap of it is, but probably some sort of uh, an average or something frame rate, something going on, which drastically restricts it. So previous system minimum was 146, max was 261, average 195. New system without OBS was 196 minimum, so compare that to 146 on my previous. Not a huge increase. Maximum was 281, previous was 261. So again, a very small difference. And the average was 230 versus 195. So not a huge difference there, which is kind of messed up. But um, with OBS open, the uh, minimum drops to 166, so still higher than previous system. Uh, but the maximum drops to 245 again. Then it the maximum is lower than the previous system, but the average is at 206. So down only 24 from without OBS, and still higher than the average of my previous system. That's the closest comparison between this system and the previous one. Almost no difference in performance. But that changes when you get to uh, Arkham Knight. So, previous system. Why do I have MSI Afterburner folder open? Let me close that. Then, this is with OBS. Nope, that's without OBS. So, without OBS. Then, with OBS. So, for my previous system on Arkham Knight, minimum 
was 120. Current system minimum was 133. Minimum, you can ignore that. It's no big deal. And again, this was without OBS. Maximum of my previous system was 227. Maximum of my current system without OBS, 511. Fucking a crazy increase there. <laughs> then the, um, like that's over double, right? That's pretty fucking amazing. Average previous system was 165. Average of new system is 278. So a huge increase there. With OBS open on my current system, minimum drops down to 124. So not a huge difference. Maximum dropped down to 424. That is a big difference, but it's still over 400. So who gives a shit, right? Average is 244, not a huge difference, down from 278. And even then, the average is still higher on the new system with OBS open and recording than it was with no OBS open on my pre uh, previous system. Same as the maximum and the minimum. Those are both higher than the previous system was, even with OBS open, which is kind of amazing. So next up, let's go ahead and check Borderlands 3 data. I have two in here for some reason. Why do I have two benchmarks? Don't remember. Let me check those. What was the difference on you? Oh, okay. One is... uh. Yeah, so this one here has volumetric fog on medium. That's what I had to reduce to actually play the game. So I'll I'll show the difference here real quick before I show the other. Where is the... Okay, the average frame rate. So this one is volumetric fog on medium. You can see 87 average on my previous system. I did not do the volumetric on medium on this system though. Only ultra. It wasn't necessary to reduce it. Uh, but only 87, and that shows why I had to reduce it here on my previous system. Because previous system, only about 68, so 67.98 is about 68, with volumetric fog and ultra. Everything else is maxed out. So, pretty fucking crazy there. And let's go ahead and close the one with uh, volumetric ultra. Open... Is this the one without? Yeah, without OBS, then open the one with OBS. Oops. Damn it. Borderlands 3 with OBS. And without, just to make sure it's the correct ones, with. Okay, good. So, this one, previous system. About 68 average versus without OBS open on this current system. Again, you can see all the settings were the same. I didn't increase this to 170, but it doesn't matter. I couldn't. It was grayed out. Uh, set to a custom limit there. So, or whatever. It, it was an unlimited frame rate. I mean, well, I guess this was custom limit instead of unlimited. But it doesn't matter. It didn't really make a difference there because the custom limit is 300. So um, either way, it's fine. New system, 199 frames per second without OBS open compared to only 68. So that, again, that one, just like Red Dead Redemption 2, is nearly three times the... Uh, actually, it is about three times the frame rate which is fucking amazing to me. Ignore the, uh, or no, no, don't ignore this frame time. I thought that was going to be minimum frame, whatever. Uh, so pretty, pretty goddamn incredible. Oh, I accidentally left V-Sync turned on during this on my previous system. Oh, well, it's too fucking light. It's not going to make a huge deal. No big deal. doesn't matter. Let's close that. I'm done comparing with that. Either way, with OBS open, Borderlands 3, 180 frames per second. So only a 19 drop. 
And again, huge difference there. It's um, kind of awesome. So, and HDR was off, of course. I didn't bother running it with. Uh, I don't think HDR was on on this, right? Yeah, HDR was off. Okay. So, go back. Next up is going to be GTA 5. I'll actually, you know what? Before GTA 5, I did not show a heaven benchmark. Uh, so, hide screen capture and bring up the Firefox capture. And let's see which one. Which one was the newest? I know I ran one, didn't I? No, I didn't. Okay. One from over two years later. That was back in 2022. I thought I re ran this, but I guess not. Oh, well, it's no big deal. So I'll check that. Minimize. Open up. And then that's without, right? Yeah, without OBS. And with. Okay, so first up. This was my previous system. Only averaged 96 frames per second. Only got a score of two or 2417. You can see settings here. Build. Max was only 196. Minimum 38.4. Compare that to current system without OBS. 204 average. 5152 score. Minimum 62. Maximum 435.6. Then with OBS open, it drops to 185. 46, 82, 60, 39, or 393. So, even with OBS open compared, again, to the previous system, it ran far higher, like double the fucking frame rate. Kind of incredible. Close that. Swap back to screen capture. And remove Firefox capture. Go back a folder. And I already checked Cinebench. I did not check Superposition though. So, Superposition. Stream. Settings. Oh, I didn't check the Opium GL on the new set. Oh well. Doesn't matter. I'll just, um, Check the DirectX one then. I didn't bother checking OpenGL's result. OpenGL on the previous system was lower though. But it, it doesn't make a difference. I'm expecting it to be a huge increase. OpenGL, or Superposition, this is with OBS. So uh, without OBS. With OBS, or without OBS, or whatever. Okay, so... Without OBS, with OBS. Okay. So, previous system. Superposition. Same exact settings as my current system had. Only 4397 points. Versus without OBS open on my current system, 11,528. So... More than double. And with OBS open, still more than double at 10,627. And again, a little under a uh, 1,000 reduction from having OBS open. So not a huge difference. So what I actually get in streams is pretty close to what I get out of streams. It's basically what all of these are showing. It's not going to make a massive change. I'll go back. Next up, finally, I can then go and check GTA 5 of my previous system of the current system without OBS. Or that was with OBS. Whoops. Without OBS. Then with OBS. 
So, and just to make sure, without and with, okay. So, previous system. Uh, frame rates are up top. Those are the passes, so each scene, it runs. So there's five scenes, even though it starts at zero, it counts as zero as scene one. So scene one, two, three, four, five, basically. And settings are all the same down here. Already showed settings and stuff once before. No big deal. Scene one only got 63. Two was about 50. Three, 63. So I guess round those up, about 64, 50, 64, 74, 68, pretty low. Without OBS open on my new system, 121, 98, 123, 148, 128. So a huge increase, about double, but also not as much as you would think it would be. At the same time, because that game sucks ass in terms of its, uh, the, the, how it runs, it just kind of sucks. You can also see maximum and minimum there. So the maximum on pass four on my previous system was 229, and that was the highest. The lowest maximum was 74. And the lowest maximum on my current system or my new system I'm using, it was 128, whereas the maximum was 286. So even then, it's a big difference, but also smaller than you would think if you look at the maximum. Then with OBS open, you can see pass 1 reduced to 114 from 120. Pass 2 dropped to 91.5 from 98 or so. So not a huge drop on each of these. 138... To one or from 148, 119, whatever, 120 basically from uh, 128. So, very small differences. Final one is going to be Red Dead Redemption 2. And these were the settings used. So, you can see here, some reason right up top, I have the proof there. They're saying, oh, yeah, you have um, a bunch more used, which is a little odd there. Not sure what that was about. Oh, maybe it was the TAA sharpening. I didn't realize I had some sharpening. No, that didn't actually add anything to the graphics memory use, though. I didn't realize I had sharpening on, on that, though, but whatever. That's not going to really make a difference. The uh, main issue here is just the... Uh Results. Uh, so let's see. No proprietary with RT. Oh yeah, and also separate it out because there is a um somewhere in there. It's not on this picture. There is a uh, volume or a uh, ray traced light path, it's, and I had that enabled on current system. And did not disable it for the testing. So check only the one that had it enabled. So without. No, that's with OBS. Without OBS. And with OBS. So previous system. Pass 1, 21. Then 22 or 27. Then 35. Then 28. Then 28. So, really fucking low. You can see why. When I played through this game on my previous system, I had to turn the settings down in order to get acceptable frame rates. It did not want to run well at all at 1440p. Fucking insane. Compare that to current system without OBS. 66, 81, 102, 82, 87. Massive difference right there. You can see the top one. More than triple. Pass two. More than triple. Pass three. More than triple. Or about triple. Fourth scene. 
more than triple. Fifth again. About triple. Or no, I guess the uh, fourth scene was about triple as well, not more than whatever. So about three times the frame rate over my previous system. Then look at with OBS open, only a two frame reduction with OBS open on the first scene. Only a a five to six. No, looks like a five reduction on second. Just not a huge change there, which is awesome. So new systems running great so far. The, the improvement in performance. Whoops. That is why I have wait so long between system upgrades. Is because when you wait long enough, the wait becomes worth it. Because then suddenly, when you're used to a, a much slower system, you upgrade after several years go by and you see this massive increase in performance, you feel like, holy shit, there's actual good progress going on with hardware capabilities. And it's amazing to then see the games you've played at lower frame rates suddenly run far better than they ever had before. It's actually kind of incredible to me. Just how well it does. Like, holy shit. But, uh, yeah, that is it for the, um, the benchmarks. I am now going to be looking around at the, uh, graphics RAM issue. I don't know why the hell, because it says GPU memory usage here in hardware info. For some reason it's reporting it wrong. I don't know why, which is a little weird. Maybe it's supposed to be dedicated amount. I can open show you something. I was programming it years ago. Then I stopped. So I just use this now for a if it opens. Uh I use this now for setting up my overlay. There's uh some amazing thing I had set up with fucking particles and shit. I was able to adjust stuff. I don't remember all the fucking controls for it though. Oh, whoops, I accidentally changed the frame rate. Whatever, set the frame rate down. Oh, duh, it's because scroll. Yeah, anyways. So let's go ahead and add something real quick. Because why not? Let's, um. OSD. Scroll way down. Memory dedicated. Let's uh, show this in OSD and see what it says. Maybe that's what I needed to look at, and I had this set to the wrong one. Let's see what it said. Yeah, that's what it was. I don't know why that was there. I'll I'll just rename it real quick and fix it because I had it fucked up. And this was customize. Copy that because the spaces are necessary. Paste, rename. And go over to OSD and check you. Value in OSD. Use color. It's got to be red. This also shows just what it takes to set up the uh, OSD like I have it. And I can remove this. And boom, I got the correct one set now. Oh, wait, hold on. Got something wrong. Not quite in place. Line digits none. Is, uh, that's off. Oh, okay. It didn't add a space at the start for some reason. I guess I thought I fucked up. I'll go back to customize. So it kind of removed that space. And rename. Now it's added. There we go. Then just to make sure this isn't getting confused again, copy original and paste it back. Rename. There we go. Now that's back to normal. So just ignore the fucking 
fuck up I made throughout this video where I had the VRAM displayed wrong. But whatever. I didn't realize it was wrong until Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm, I'm an idiot. I fuck up sometimes. No big deal. It, it was weird. Just, oh well. Anyways, that's the end of the video. I was not expecting it to be two hours. It's kind of fucking crazy. But hey, AV1, hopefully the um, the quality looks a hell of a lot better now. In order to actually play AV1 on my system, I had to download a fucking codec from the Windows Store, though, which is kind of insane. Uh, I also got Minecraft installed, but fuck you, Minecraft, for what you did. You butchered this goddamn installer. You you can't choose where to install it anymore. It just always installs to the same location. I fucking It doesn't give an option at all. And it didn't create a desktop shortcut. I had to look up where the fuck it is. And then I found, oh, okay. The program files Windows app or Windows apps folder is where it stores it. And then it's inside some folder inside that. And I tried going in to create a shortcut on my own because I, I couldn't launch it without going to the goddamn start menu. And I'm not willing to do that every fucking time. So it's like, okay, so um, how am I supposed to get in this? It won't let me. Well, that sucks. Good thing I know how to actually make it so I can get into any folder on my system by changing the owner because the owner was set to trusted installer. So I just set that to administrator in order to actually get into it. Only that one folder though. Oh, stupid. I don't know why they do that. But anyways, this is done. Benchmarks are over. Anyone actually stuck around? All those who actually did watch the... um the video of this the streams i did uh thanks for watching the because i was not expecting there to actually get a decent amount of views compared to what i normally get i still don't get shit for views but i mean comparatively i mean 161 v views on part one of the the build 45 views on part two so far Two likes on part one. I got a like on today's video. Well, actually, I've recorded that yesterday. I uploaded it uh, before I went to bed so it could process, and I released it when I got up today. Um, Only six views on that. I haven't been out very long. I don't think people are going to really care too much about that. I don't usually get a whole lot of views on much of anything. Somehow got some on Doom. I think that was just because Doom had an update, and they released Doom 2 as part of Doom 1 for free or something. And I didn't know about that. Just the timing of when I was playing Doom just ended up being kind of perfect. But yeah, it's kind of nice to actually see a decent amount of views on a video every once in a while. So everyone who's watching that, thanks for watching. Everyone who watched this, thanks for watching. And um, next stream I do, uh, when I continue through Alice Madness to Returns, will be on the new system. And so far, it's amazing. I just hope I can get the damn water block for it that I want. That um that will be pretty fucking crazy. Let me see. I'll show the one I want to get. Uh go over to water block. I also have an alternate option, but I want this one. I'll show the screen in a sec. Load it up. It's out of stock. It was in stock when I bookmarked it. So Firefox. Primo chill. Please, please get this back in stock. Like, son of a bitch, seriously, get it in stock. I want it back in stock. I want to order this next month. If it's not here, I'll have to check something else. This is the one I want. It's for my graphics card. I need a water block for my graphics card. This thing is loud. So anyways, that's all. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. And I will see you guys uh, on some other video. Probably the stream later in the week. Until then, bye for now.